cases that you have argued over your many years of practicing law that you think has changed the American legal system and why? Well, some for better, some for worse, probably. Um, look, let's be honest about one thing. Most of my clients have been guilty. Thank God for that. <laughs> Would anybody want to live in a country where most people charged with crime are innocent? That might be Iran, it might be China, it's not the United States. Most people charged with crime are, are guilty. And most of my clients have been guilty, and I've won a lot of those cases. And so, uh, has that <laughs> changed the law, changed perception? I mean, clearly the OJ case changed a lot of perceptions and made people feel the system wasn't fair. But people forget that we say 10, better 10 guilty go free than one innocent be wrong we can find. Um, I don't assert innocence on behalf of my client unless I honestly believe he's innocent, but I do challenge the government at every turn. So I think challenging the government has been very important. The other thing has been the First Amendment. We've seen major changes in the First Amendment. I've been responsible for some of them. I argued the Pentagon Papers case for Senator Mike Corbell. I'm now involved in the WikiLeaks case on behalf of Julian Assange, and my goal is to try to expand the First Amendment and not let government's claims of secrecy and national security uh, limit the First Amendment. And so those are important cases. Capital punishment, um, I tell the story in my book about how Justice Goldberg asked me to write a memo striking down the death penalty as unconstitutional. And I said to Justice Goldberg, the Constitution mentions the death penalty five times, having to say it's unconstitutional. He said, that's the beauty of the Constitution. It's a living document, yeah. and it changes over time. Uh, Justice Scalia thinks it's a dead document, and he's <laughs> used that term, and that it never changes. It's like the Bible, and whenever I argue with him, I say, even the Bible has changed. Uh, you know, so um, oh, these are some of the issues. The, the case that I was most kind of identified with my client, mostly I don't identify with my clients, they're, they're, you know, they're not particularly nice people. And <laughs> when I ask who the nastiest person I ever defended was, the nastiest person, I don't think you'll guess. Who do you think? You're on the helm. Yep. <laughs> Hers is the only case I would today give back the money. <laughs> If I can erase the memories, um, I'll, I'll tell you just one story. I can only tell you stories that are public. I can't tell you the private stories, obviously, Lloyd Klein stories. But one day we were having tea, um, uh, breakfast in her hotel in, in, in the morning, um, and uh, somebody, the, the waiter, the busboy, brought me a cup of tea, and it had a little bit of liquid in the saucer. I didn't even see it. She saw it, and she grabbed it from me and threw it on the floor against the marble, broke it into a million pieces, said to the waiter, get down on your hands and knees and beg me for your job back. And I said to her, right there and then, Leona, I will never, ever be with you in public again. Um, I don't have to tolerate this, I don't have to take this, I'll be your lawyer of court, but I will never be seen in public with you again. I will not be identified with that kind of behavior, that kind of conduct. She was indeed the queen of me. Alan, just do me a favor, please don't throw this water on the floor. <laughs>